standard cautionary statements. You all know the business, so we shall proceed onwards from there. Uh, quick overview. You'll see that uh, we are, we've got about 110 million shares outstanding. Uh, we have an experienced team that manages the company. We're in excellent jurisdiction. Uh, we have proven production over the last 10 years. We've produced approximately 9.5 million ounces already, but $175 million in revenue. But what makes the story really valid is that we've only explored about 10 to 15 percent of the property, and we'll get into that. Uh, market capitalization is currently $45 million, and management's running around 10 percent with the insiders as a group. Uh, as I said before, we produced about nine, it says 9.4, this is dated 9.5 now. 95% uh, of our production and revenue is silver. We are not a silver equivalent, we're pure silver production. It makes us somewhat unique. We've recently been able to finance in order to push forward our exploration because of our property is so massive, it requires additional money besides the money we generate from workings. Results, you can see on the bottom line, we get those all the time. It's almost a no-hum, so I'll proceed on from there. Uh, to give you an idea of the relationship between our stock, as was pointed out, and the price of silver, we're highly leveraged, and you can see the reaction when silver moves. Uh, earlier in the 16, we we're up 1,200%. And uh, more recently, we're up 204% on pricing. That's the sensitivity and leverage we have to silver. Quickly on the property itself, we have a package of about 210 square kilometers. That's bigger than about five of the countries in the UN. Uh, we have two contiguous mineral uh, districts. These are some of the oldest districts in Mexico. Cortez actually hid out on our property 500 years ago. We're a three and a half hour drive from Mexico City on a paved highway. Services are excellent. We have good infrastructure. We take power off the Mexican grid. We have a skilled workforce. We have a social license. 99% of our staff are Mexicans. They're high quality workers. We have grandfathers, fathers, sons, and nowadays daughters. Uh, we are, as I say, one of the most prolific areas. We are in what they call the epithermal Silver Belt in Mexico. Tasco is to the south of us. In fact, several of our veins are attributed to be the Tasco veins. I'll give you an example of some of the things we found. We found over 50 old workings right back to the Spanish era on our property. 5,000 old workings have been located all to date. Here's a picture of basically the overall concessions. Uh, we have about two-thirds of that concession in our title. You'll notice the veins run northwest, southeast. These are all epithermal veins. To the north, you'll see there's our first mill. It's about a 550-ton-a-day mill. To the very south is another mill, 200. It's a pilot plant designed to supplement other production we get from down there, and I'll get into that very briefly. Right now, we're producing from three underground veins, or three underground mines, rather, San Ramon, uh, Guadalupe and Cuchara. Guadalupe has produced 10 million ounces in its own right with, with Bagnoli's before us. Here's a, just a picture of the mills. You can see uh, the 200 ton a day one is readily expandable to 500 tons a day. The Guadalupe at 535 can be expanded up to about 600. And then I guess if we get that much ore, we'll just have to build another mill. We're now producing from these sites and you'll notice San Ramon uh, Cuchara and Guadalupe are the three of the underground mines we pull from. Each one has different pricing and cost characteristics. And more recently, the Veta Negra is a open pit. Uh, it's almost a quarry situation. It's remarkable. It's still small at this stage, but in fact, mining it is simply with a backhoe. We don't use explosives or anything else. So we expect to see some interesting events coming through with Veta Negra. The idea of what you're seeing with an epithermal vein is that there tends to be a hierarchy of minerals. Near the surface, you get into high-grade silver, and in fact, we recently were showing some pictures of what they call wire silver. It actually looks like a bird's nest of wire. 
As you go to depth, we get into lead zinc, down about 250, 300 meters. There's a barren area, and then below that, very interestingly enough, we're running into copper and gold, a whole new mining district in its own right. Each mine tends to be located at a different elevation and has different characteristics. Quick example, on the right you'll see a picture of the gold and the uh, copper. It's just the shape of the deposits itself. Here's the, where we work from. Area 1 is where we've been mining. It's where we've spent over 80% of our exploration dollars. Area 2 is untouched. We haven't been able to get out there other than we did find an old working from the Spanish era. Area 3 is a VMS, actually, volcanogenic massive sulfide. We've run 30,000 tons through the pilot plant. It needs about $22 silver to put it in production. We're working on some metallurgical plans that will reduce that module, and we're hoping very in the near future to be able to demonstrate that what we see as our break-even cost on that can be dropped about 30%. Area four is an area called uh, uh, Vea del Oro, Valley of Gold. Uh, it's about 500 meters vertically below our current mining area, and it exposes that gold copper horizon. Rumor has it, along the anecdotally at least, that uh, the gold and copper from this di district and originally ended up in the Mexican mine or Mexican Aztec city. So we are, have been a producer for 500 years. Here's San Ramon, quick idea. You could put the Statue of Liberty in the height of that from a, uh, a point of the long view, point of view, and you still wouldn't reach the top of it. It's a big deposit. Uh, this one I'll just skip by, it, but it just shows you structurally how we're running several kilometers between some of these major mines. The one on the right has been in production for over 500 years. Uh, another one, same thing. We have dozens of these, and I'll just have to run through them very quickly, time-wise. The one I mentioned to you where we went out and took a quick look to see an old mine, here it is. And in fact, uh, you can basically throw a rock and you'll hit the old city of Tasco, which is the oldest mine in Mexico. This is our VMS. It's an open pit. We've already pre-stripped it. It's standing ready for production with an improvement in the price of silver or an improvement in the metallurgy, and we're working on that, as I mentioned before. This is the basic, uh, we did a, a quick 43-101 on it to keep the exchange happy. We didn't even bother to include the copper and gold in there. But we are working on the metallurgy. I say right now we think about $22 silver, it would be of interest. We're going to see if we can push that down fairly dramatically. I mentioned the Valle de Oro. On the top of Valle de Oro, there is two veins. You'll see one of the drill holes we punched there was 19.6 grams over 2.9 meters. As we go down into the bottom of the Valle de Oro, there's a massive high anomaly, um, basically a magnetic anomaly. Uh, you'll see that the, we drilled one, hole, one property down there, and the vein itself, the, the series of veins went off of that, ran 6.5 grams across 1.6 meters over a length of 50 meters. And that radiates all the way around that. And that area of disturbance is two kilometers by two kilometers. As I said before, we are a pure silver producer. Less than 5% or 10% uh, is non-silver. And in fact, recently, it's been less than 5% is non-silver. We are probably the highest producer of silver in terms of a percentage in the industry. Going for the future, we're going to explore Via de Oro. It represents a significant target for us. And we've obviously had grades that work worthwhile chasing. We're going to continue to produce and increase our production. And what makes it very interesting is we're EBITDA positive. Over the last 12 years, 50% of our exploration and acquisition costs and capital costs have been paid through by earnings. The uh, one-year chart, you'll see we're responding very positively to the lead-in to the price of silver. And going forward, 
uh, we expect to see a response to both the silver and the gold as we go forward. Thank you.